We are at the James Beard House, and I am so honored to be here with Jose Enrique. Thank you so much for being no, here. No, it's my pleasure. So, first of all, give us a little bit about your background, because you do not have the typical chef background of, like, I grew up my whole life knowing I was going to be a chef. <laughs> well, not at all. I guess after high school, I was kind of, like, into... I guess being a lawyer, like that's what I wanted to do because I think it's mainly because I like debating. Right. So, but then it was like high school, I did two months of that and then I quit and after that I just started cooking. Mm -hmm. And it was really like, you know what, I'm gonna do this because it's something I bring makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Like when I was growing up, it was always part of my family. Like we'd go to my grandma's house and it was like 20 of us, you know, right. and it was, it just reminded me of, of happy times, you know? Mm -hmm. Food has always like been like a center of, of things in my family. So mm -hmm. that's, I guess, why, where I started going that way. And you grew up in Puerto Rico. One side of your family is Puerto Rican, one side is Cuban. Mm -hmm. how, you know, how did that influence you as you were growing up and then as you decided to become a chef? Well, so my dad, when he leaves Cuba, he's probably like five or six. Mm -hmm does a little bit of Mexico, Florida, and then ends up in Puerto Rico. They they had a restaurant in Santurce, so the food is already coming in, you know? It's right. always like been there. And so what happened was the mix of things is like, my grandma from Cuba was always like, you'd go there and they would be like, oh, well, I've got filet mignon with Bernay sauce. I'm like, Bernay sauce, whatever, right. you know? But, my, <laughs> but everybody's, after the meal, everybody's like fighting over the leftover Bernays because my dad would always say it. He's like, okay. okay, over the scrambled eggs tomorrow, I'm pouring the sauce, you know? Yeah. And then on my mom's side, which is Puerto Rican, I got all that, I guess I had, I got all that really homey food, you know? I, I had all that like codfish and roots and tubers, like all that tropical, really like, old school Spanish food I got from them. So mm -hmm. it, it was a great combination. Yeah, and you left Puerto Rico to train for a number of years. I mean, you went to culinary school, mm -hmm. you lived all over the world. How did that influence you? Obviously to have that formal training, but also to kind of get out of where you grew up and experience other types of food. Well, I mean, anywhere you go, you're gonna learn, you know? So I think what I learned the most was just not only all the different techniques, but main, mainly just having that love for that local mm. food that you see wherever you go. It's like people are so proud of it. Mm. And I think that really instilled something in me when I got back. You moved back to Puerto Rico quite young. You know, a lot of chefs, it takes them a long time to sort of come home. You went home at the age of 30 and uh -huh. kind of said, all right, it's time for me to open here and to, you know, build my restaurant here. Why was it time for you to Well, you know what, it, it, but it wasn't like I got, because usually between jobs I'd go home you know and right. I'd spend like two months there just recharging battery yeah. I'd like to say and when I got back um I was like okay I'm gonna do it I wanted to open up my restaurant maybe when I was like 35 around there and I wanted my my goal was just to keep traveling yeah. but then when I get there I had some neighbors of mine that had a restaurant in La Placita which is the market where my restaurant is now right. and they were they were selling it and they like asked me to just come and check it out. We know this is what you do. And I fell in love with it. Tell me a little bit about sort of what your philosophy of cooking to keep it Puerto Rican, but also have it to elevate it a little bit. Well, you know what? It's funny because it's like we're, like you just said right now, it's like what you see happening now, mm. but it's actually what was happening years ago. Right. So it's all like just. It's coming from start really. It is. And then for me, it's the easiest way to cook. You know, if I have great product around, all I have to do is not mess it up. Right. You know, that's that's <laughs> right. how I, that's how I feel. My kitchen is like, mm. we I buy the best product I can find, and then I try not to mess it up. The restaurant being where it's at in that market, it's just there. People, there's people that go daily to that market, and it's not huge, but you can daily go there and find. Oh, guavas just came in today. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to do some yuca or some taro root. And, oh, there's freshly squeezed orange juice. Give me some of that. You know, so it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's present. You've gotten quite a lot of attention for your restaurant and in a way brought a lot of attention to Puerto Rico. You were a food and wine best new chef. You've been nominated for a James Beard Award. You know, how does that feel for you and how has it affected the restaurant? Because obviously both of those accolades 
you were not something a Puerto Rican chef ever had, and now it's kind of, you've been sort of made into this like ambassador to the <laughs> culinary scene in Puerto Rico, not something you asked for, but certainly is exciting. How have those accolades affected you and the restaurant and sort of what you're doing? When that started happening, it's, I guess it kind of makes you feel like what you're doing, just it makes you believe in it a little bit more. Right. Like we're working so hard <laughs> and you someone know? noticed. It's like, what I'm doing right now is getting this, it's like pff, just, it opens that door a bit more. Mm. And and when I open doors, I, when I say that, I'd also mean that as far as Puerto Rico. Right. Because the fact that, the fact that now that happened, now that door is open. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for me, it's for the whole Puerto Rico as a whole, every cook, every chef there, you know? And do you feel like when you, if when if you open more restaurants it'll always be in puerto rico or do you hope to maybe bring puerto rican cuisine out of puerto rico well to those of us who live in other places <laughs> who want good puerto rican food i mean food, come on have who, to ask it <laughs> who, who wouldn't want to open up a restaurant in new york you know come on that's what i'm hoping <laughs> <laughs> I mean. we'll see but yeah i definitely would love to have a place here but we'll see Little by little. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jose, for your time. My pleasure. Really appreciate it and for joining us here in New York at the Brew House. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.